All right, we're live here at Centerburg, Ohio, out in our parking lot service. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. I hope you're glad to be here. If you're glad to be here, give us a little honk. All right, now listen. All right, all right, hold up here. You all just remember all these horns that's blowing. When we get back in the church, I better start hearing some amens. I had one honk there. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you. Honor you, God. We thank the Lord for this beautiful day that you've given us, Lord, to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we just ask that, God, you would come down and visit with us like you never had before. God, it's so good to be here. It's good to see your people, see the parking lot full. God, we're thankful, Lord, for the blessings that you poured upon your people. And God, we trust you. We love you. We honor you. And Father, we're thankful that we have victory in Jesus this morning. We love you. We ask God that you'd have your way. Save us, soul, God, if there's someone lost and undone. We ask these things in Jesus' sweet, blessed name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Page 120. Victory in Jesus, you all know the words, so please, please sing it with us. fellowship but that's probably not a wise idea but y'all can fellowship with the folks that's in your car I want to know more about my Lord I hope that you today want to know more about your Lord while traveling through this world of sorrow I'm on my way to go I want to know more about my 
Praise the Lord. All right, but this time I'm going to have the girls sit down here and we're going to uh, we're going to come to you for the morning tithes and offerings. What we ask, there's buckets on either side of the sidewalk. Uh, we want you to get out of your car. Just, of course, keep your distance. And uh, we're going to worship the Lord. And today you ought to thank the Lord for what you're giving Him. God has given us so much that we ought to at least thank God for all that He has done for us in our lives. But right now we want to pray over the offering. Father, we love you. God, we thank you so much for this wonderful day, God, for the opportunity, Lord, that, that, that we can come and just worship together. Lord, though we can't get and hug and shake hands, but God, just to be with one another in this parking lot, God, most of all, to feel your very presence, to feel your spirit. God, you've been with us. You're going to continue to be with us. And Lord, I've always said, God, if you take us to it, you're going to get us through it. And Father, I just take, ask that you'd bless this offering today. May it be an uplift to your kingdom, God. May we reach people like we've never reached before. Before. Father, we love you. Bless the girls as they sing. Bless this offering, Father, and bless our service. And God, more importantly, more than anything in this life, Father, we pray souls would come to know Jesus Christ. Backsliders would come back from where uh, they come from. And Lord, I just pray, God, that you'd be honored and exalted and glorified. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus. I know right now that you feel so defeated. You tried so hard to change, but don't know where to start. The only way to freedom is surrender. Just let it go and leave it at the cross and come to Jesus and lay your burdens down. Come to Jesus, not tomorrow, but right now. Come to Jesus, his arms are open wide. Come to Jesus, yeah, the one who gave his life. from the truth there's nowhere else to hide it doesn't have to be this way just surrender to the light and come to Jesus and lay your burdens down come to Jesus not tomorrow but right now come to Jesus without me you can make the sun to shine and Lord without me you can cause the dead to rise and Lord without me you can make the blind to see and you can tell the mountains to be cast into the sea but Lord without you I am nothing on my own I'm just earthly flesh and bones coming before your throne. But Lord, if I have you, then I'm a child of the King. I'm an heir to the throne. You can do anything, but I'm nothing without you. Lord, you don't need my hands to make the lame to walk, and you don't need my tongue to make the dumb to talk, and you don't need my words to give hope to the lost, because you are the one, Lord, you're the one who paid the cost. But Lord, without you, I am nothing on my own. I'm just earthly flesh and bones coming before your throne. But Lord, if I have you, then I'm a child of the King. I'm an heir to the throne. You can do anything. But Lord, without you, I am nothing on my own. I'm just earthly flesh and bones coming before your throne. But Lord, then I'm a child of the King, I'm an heir to the throne. You can do anything, but I'm nothing without you.
ostracized for 12 years. I'm used to being alone, spin everything I had and now it's gone. I'm used to being put down, my issues tell it all. My only hope is anchored in this fall if I could just touch the hem of his garment I know I'd be made whole if I could just press my way through this madness his love would heal my soul if only one touch so many people call him how could he ever just a brush of him would stop the flow if he knew would he rebuke me or shame me to the crowd well i'm desperate cause it's never or it's now if i could just touch the hem of his garment i know i'd be made whole if i could just pray turned around he says somebody has unleashed my power well frightened and embarrassed I bowed you see I told him of my troubles and how I had to touch the hem of his garment and I know I'd be made whole and how I had to press my way through this madness his love would heal my soul then with one word he touched the hem of my garment and I know I've been made whole and somehow he tell you he touched me he reached way down and touched me when no one else would touch me yeah, Jesus surely touched me and I've been made whole amen amen Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Sissy. I want to, again, thank everyone for their help and putting this all together. Uh, man, what a blessing. What a blessing. Uh, my, my mind continually goes back to the scripture that, uh, that Joseph spoke to his brothers, how that the devil meant it for bad or they meant it for bad, but, man, God's wanting glory from this. And I'm thankful to be here today. I hope that you are as well. Uh, again, we want to thank Brother Sam and, of course, all those that's helped, Jeff and Jay and Bobby and Micah and uh, the girls, of course, for singing. Uh, today we're going to be, we backed up a little bit, hopefully, that the wind would not catch us as much. Uh, it wasn't as windy earlier, but now it looks like it's picking up. That's all right. I want you, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Philippians this morning. The book of Philippians, chapter number one, is where we're going to be. I'm going to back up here a little bit. Because it's really windy now. Maybe I'll back her up here. Huh? There we go. You guys may not be able to see me, but hopefully you can hear me. Can you guys hear me okay? All right. Philippians chapter number one. Now, I may just get to running, and uh, I don't know, but you all pray for us this morning. Philippians chapter number one. If you're there this morning, say amen. All right. I got a very unique message that God has given us this week. And uh, before we get started, I also want to say this. Uh, we're trying to figure all this stuff out. And, of course, 
when we was setting up the piano and stuff, we didn't realize that pole was there. So some of you that's watching by Facebook probably saw a majority of a pole more than you saw anything. But we hope that you got to hear it. Uh, and if you're not hearing it well on Facebook, please someone message Brother Sam and let him know so we can get that fixed. But we're hoping and praying that everything is coming through okay. Uh, Philippians chapter number one, uh, I want to, with God's help, preach a message that is really, uh, it's different this morning. But it goes right along with the day and age and the times that we are living in. Now, I'm going to give you the title of it. And when I give it to you, you're going to understand why that I give you the title. The title is one word. And the title of today's message is this, quarantined. Quarantined. You say, preacher, it's not in the Bible. Yes, it is. And I'm going to preach it to you just in a minute. In Philippians chapter number one, this is the, uh, of course, the apostle Paul. Paul is preaching or actually he is writing a letter to his church. Now, I believe in my heart that this church is one of Paul's favorite churches. He makes known to them that they are, are one, some of his favorite people. This church here at Philippi is, is really consists of a bunch of Gentile people, converted Gentile people. But in verse number 12, we read and we realize this, that the Apostle Paul is now in prison. He has been in prison now for two years. And he's writing to this church and telling them and trying to encourage them how that they must continue on. And today, that's really what this message is about. It's about to try to encourage you, though we are faced with unprecedented times, though we are faced with uh, times in our lives that we're not used to, I don't believe that should ever be an excuse for us not to serve God. Someone ought to say amen right there. Listen, Paul did whatever he could to make sure that the gospel went out. And today, uh, my desire, my prayer is this, is that if you're watching by internet or you're listening by radio or if you're sitting here in the parking lot, my desire for you is we can't stop living when the world tells us to stop. Jesus Christ never stopped. Listen to me. The Bible says, for I am the Lord at Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. We preached it on Thursday evening. For I I am the Lord and I change not. Well, preacher, how can you preach a message on quarantine? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let us read right now chapter number one, starting at verse number 12. The Bible says this. Now, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, but I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance. Now, notice that word, the furtherance of the gospel so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident in my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even uh, of envy and strife and some also of goodwill. Then one preach of Christ's contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, Paul asked, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. I like that right there. Christ is preached. And therein do re rejoice, yea, and will rejoice, verse 19, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Verse number 20 says, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. Thank God, Paul said in Romans, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God. Listen, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile, but it is the power of God. God unto salvation. Listen, you can't be saved except the power of God come down. Amen. You can't give your heart to Jesus Christ except the Holy Spirit move in your life. You can't come and be a Christian. Listen, if the power of God doesn't show you these things, someone ought to say amen right there. Thank God for the power of God. Thank God for the very presence of God. Thank God for the Holy Spirit of God this morning. He goes on to say in verse 20, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. I like this verse 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is grain. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you, Father. We ask God that you'd have your way here in this service. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'd do a move as only 
way you can. God, we pray if there's someone here in this parking lot, Lord, that doesn't know you. God, I pray right now, Lord, you convict their hearts. God, when they realize that they have no hope when this life is over, and Lord, you teach us in your word that as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And God, if there's some here today that's standing and sitting in their car, God, they've come, they've made an effort to be here. Lord, I, I, I believe it's not by coincidence, but God, I know that you want to change their lives because you said that you're not slack as some men count slackness, but you are long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And God, I pray your Holy Spirit upon this place. God, I pray the Holy Spirit upon your minister today. God, I pray the Holy Spirit upon your people here today. And God, if someone decides to take a run and shout and fit, God, would you bless them all over this parking lot? Because God, if they don't, I just might. And God, I know that I'll need your help to do so. But Father, we're thankful today. And we ask God that you'd bless this message today, that it would honor you and magnify the name of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Quarantine. Quarantine, what a, what a wonderful subject, if you will. And I know a lot of people saying, well, how in the world can you get a message uh, titled at quarantine? Well, as we said earlier, the Apostle Paul is now, he's imprisoned. I'm sure that he would want to be like a lot of you that's watching by Internet. And most of us here in the parking lot, we, if we had our brothers, we'd rather walk through the door of the church and go in and sit down and, and, and hug one another and shake one another's hand and, and go back to the way they used to be. I'm sure that Paul didn't want to be in prison that day. I'm sure that Paul would have rather just been out there doing the Lord's work and he had made a promise to God, God, if you'd save me, I'll go to the ends of the earth. He, he realized that he was the chief of sinners. He was the least among everybody. But I do believe this, my friend, that the apostle Paul, Paul was going to do whatever he could within his power to make sure the gospel of Jesus Christ got out even though he was quarantined. You see, Paul was in prison. He was in a Roman jail cell. Actually, he was under house arrest at this particular time. He's now at least two years writing to this church. And one thing that I've noticed about this today, church, that, that God's people or people in general, we are people or creatures of habit. Amen. We don't like change. <laughs> we don't like change. You all sit back here. You don't like change. You don't like sitting in your car. Oh, yeah, I know it's neat. I know it's something different. But most of us, we'd rather be back in the church, sitting in our rightful pews, sitting in our right chair, sitting in the same place that we left a few or, uh, last month when we came to the house of God. So we don't like change. It's very obvious that we don't like change. But can I say this? Though we don't like change, the Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, For I am the Lord, and I change not. So if God doesn't change... That must, that must mean that you and I must change. There's no doubt in my mind that we have to change. Paul had to change the way that he was reading people or reaching people at this particular time. I believe that God's people ought to be humble. The Bible says, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. I, I believe it was John in chapter 3, verse 30. He says this, that John said this, he must increase, speaking of Jesus, but I must decrease. We was preaching last Thursday on a message here at the church, and man, what a a wonderful time and that we had and I know that there wasn't many here but can I just tell you something that happened uh, uh, since Thursday since we preached that message four different people have reached out to your pastor and said pastor they said thank you so much to, for the message that you preached thank you so much for minding God I want you to know something pastor I give my heart to Jesus Christ that person was in South Carolina <laughs> well glory I'm telling you God can do a great work if we let God we have to realize church that we've got to reach people regardless of the situations that we're faced with. Had a person in Lancaster uh, come back and tell me that they got right with God. One in Westerville, Ohio said they got right with God. And there was a fourth one that said they got right with God. Listen, I don't know where they were from, but the greatest news about it all is, bless God, they got right with God. Hallelujah. They got right with God. You know, it's important to get right with God because this life is just a vapor. The Bible says we're here for a little while and then we vanish away. But we've preached a message on things we cannot do. And let me just quickly tell you what we preached on. First of all, church, it's not a time for us to get discouraged. 
Hey, listen to you. Listen to me. I'm encouraged this morning. Yes, I don't like being out here underneath the porch or underneath the awning, but can I say this? I'm thankful that I'm saved. I'm thankful I'm on my way to heaven. I'm thankful today that God has given us the ability to come out here and preach. I'm thankful that you can sit in the comforts of your car and turn on the uh, the radio and listen to a preacher preach his heart out, hoping someone would get saved and maybe uh, edify uh, the name of Jesus Christ and possibly lift up those that's here this morning and those watching by internet so it's not a time for God's people to be discouraged it's not a time for God's people to get in a place of disbelief where we're trusting or not trusting in God and where we're questioning God with everything that's going on we also preached how that you and I as Christians cannot get complacent we've got to be moving forward for God he's not called us home yet the Bible says as long as we're here we've got a work to do this quarantine can I just give you some some words that we probably usually don't use at church. This quarantine stinks. Y'all like being quarantined to your cars? Y'all like being quarantined to your home? I don't either. I don't like like being quarantined. I'd rather hug your neck and shake your hand, but at this particular time we can't. I want to give you some things to think about real quick. And everything that I'm going to give you this morning is biblical. Let me give you something to think about. You all remember the story of Noah, how that God called Noah to build an ark in the middle of a desert, nevertheless. Hadn't rained there forever. But yet God told Noah to go build an ark. Do you know how many days after he that built that ark that God sent the rains? Do you know how many days that it rained? The Bible says that day that it rained 40 days and 40 nights. I want you to keep that number in your head. Not only did it rain 40 days or 40 nights, but if you'll remember the children of Israel, when they come out of Exodus, the Bible says that they went into the wilderness. Listen, it was just a hop, skip, and a jump over to the land of Philistine. Oh, but God put them on the backside of a desert. Moses was leading a bunch of sheep around. They had no idea what they was doing. But listen to me, friends. You know how long they were in the wilderness? For 40 years. Hey, listen to me. You think the, the time that we've been quarantined's bad. How would you like to be on the backside of a desert running around in circles not sure where you're going to end up the next day but you know what God's people Moses God's beloved people still they trusted God you know how many days that Moses when he went up into the mountain to get the tablets the Ten Commandments the Bible says that Moses was up on that mountain for 40 days and 40 nights remember I told you to keep that number You remember Goliath, that old giant, that one that stood up in front of the children of Israel and said, did he defy the armies of the living God? Do you know how many days that Goliath every day was consistent in what he doing in coming before the children of Israel? He intimidated them. He told them, listen, they were as grasshoppers to him. And but, but listen, he, he was like a dog to them. And he would chew them up and spit them out. Do you know how many days that Goliath every day was faithful to get up out of his bed, stand before the children of Israel and said, I am the giant. Who is this God that you serve? I'll tell you how many days that he approached them every day for 40 days straight he appeared unto the children of Israel trying to intimidate them from following God 40 days any of you know how many days that Jesus Christ the only begotten son of God the savior of the world fasted the Bible says that Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights but then after that 40 days and 40 nights the Bible says that God led him with the Spirit of God into the wilderness. You want to know why what was about to happen? He was about to be tempted. Can I tell you something, church? I need you to listen to this. 40 means like that. There must be a a pretty important number to me. And I did some research. Now, if if it holds out and and truth be told, you and I here in the state of Ohio, we we begin to listen to the, the health officials and the governor. And the governor has told us and the health officials have told us that we need to quarantine. We need to stay at home for a period of time. Now, that stay at order started on March 23rd that I that I can recollect I believe it's March 23rd but you know what if it comes to pass it will be lifted on May 2nd can any of you tell me how many days that is in case you didn't know that's 40 
That's 40 days. Now, you can call it coincidence. You can call it whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to call it coincidental. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe it's in the divine power of God. Listen, I'm not here to give the devil any credit. I want to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Why, preacher? Because he is still on the throne and prayer changes things. Blessed be to God. I'm telling you today, he's on the right hand of God and he's making intercessions for you and me. 40 days. Preacher, that's great, but what does all this mean, 40 days? Listen, I said earlier, I don't want to give the devil credit. I refuse to give the devil credit. I want to honor God this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Paul is quarantined. Paul now is in a jail. He's been arrested. He's he's now in a jail for two years. This this is one. Notice this. Paul is in prison. And this letter in in Philippians is one of the four letters that the Apostle Paul wrote to his church. One of the four. Now, I believe this with all of my heart. Every word that is written is unfallible. Every word that is written, it's unadulterated. I believe that every letter that is written, it is meant for God's people. Do you believe that this morning? I believe the word of God is to be a help to us, to encourage us, and to help us along this way. The four Bible, or the four books that Paul wrote was Ephesians, Philippians, uh, Philippians, or Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. Now listen to me. Paul could have been discouraged, but Paul wasn't. Paul teaches us how that you and I must move on regardless of the situations that we're faced with. Yes, we can get discouraged because we're shut up in our homes. We can uh, make excuses. We can get woe is me. We can fight against the government. We can fight against the health officials. But have you ever stopped to think that God may just be trying to teach us something? Do you know what 40 means? 40 means this. It's a time of test and trial if there's ever a time that God's people needs to be tested by God listen to me I'm not giving the devil credit I believe that God is trying to wake up us I believe that God is trying to wake up our country I believe that God is trying to wake up the church listen time is running out souls are dying lost and going to hell and without God's people without the men of God preaching the word of God where's people going to end up quarantine Boy, what a unique message that God has given us. Paul teaches us regardless of the situation. Notice this. Regardless of the situation that you're in right now, Paul says you can learn to be content. Paul's in prison. How many of you would rather be in prison this morning? How many of you would rather just have three meals a day, be quarantined to a cell, an eight-by-eight cell, with a toilet on one side, a bed on the other? And barely got enough covers to cover up. Listen, you ought to consider yourself blessed. Amen. You, listen, I understand we can't get in the church house right now. And someone made a comment that the devil's closed the church. I don't believe it. I don't believe it for a minute. God can do whatever he wants to. If he wants this virus gone, he can do it. So why hasn't he done it? Why? Because God is trying to teach us something. Quarantine. Paul made this statement. In Philippians chapter 4, if you'll go on over, you don't have to turn there, but in verse number 11, he says, Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned, Paul said. Remember, he's in prison. Paul says, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Now, notice Paul didn't say, The position I'm in, I've learned to stop. But I've learned to be content. In other words, he was at a place in his life. You're in a place in your life. Though you are restricted on what you can do, that does not mean you stop. You learn to be content, but you don't stop. Can someone preach? Help me preach today. Listen, don't get content. Paul learns, he says, to be content. In verse number 12, he says, I know both how to, uh, to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. In verse 13, notice this. He says this, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. See, here's the problem. We're leaning on the arms of flesh. We're leaning on the arms of man when we should be leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ this morning. Paul said, I have learned, I have learned (laughs) in everything to be content. There are things that we must learn while being quarantined. Let me ask you a question. 
What have you done, Christian person, lost person? What have you done since you've been quarantined? What have you done since you've been quarantined? Paul has encouraged us in the Word of God that we should do at least three things. And the first one comes, if you'll open your Bibles back up to chapter number 1. Paul has encouraged us. Now keep in your mind where Paul is. Paul is in prison. He cannot get out. He is under house arrest. The Romans have put him in jail for doing what? For preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? He, are you willing this morning to go to jail for the name of Jesus Christ? Are you willing to surrender your life? Listen, Paul says, for me to live is gain, but for me to die is Christ. What Paul was saying was this, regardless of what I do, whether I live this side of heaven, it's for the name of Christ, and if I die, I know exactly where I'm going. Amen. Praise the Lord. Notice in verse number 12 and verse number 13. Paul is in prison. He says, but I would you should understand, brethren. In other words, Paul says, I need you to understand, brethren, that the things which have happened to me. What's happened to Paul? Paul has been arrested. Paul is in prison. Why? For serving Jesus Christ. Listen to me. For going out there and doing what God has called him to do. The devil thought that they could shut devil, uh, Jesus up. But Jesus says, no, you can't. Oh, get, listen. To, oh, glory to God. Jesus made this statement. He said, oh, grave, where is thy victory? Death, where is thy sting? Can I tell you this? Jesus Christ did die. Jesus Christ was buried. The stone was put over the door. But can I say this on that third and appointed day, he got up out of the grave. That's why we're here today. Because Jesus got out of the grave. Notice what he said. But I would you, but I would you should be understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. You know what he was saying? Listen to me. Can I say something? He said, listen to me. Because that I was put in prison, because I was quarantined, this only offered up and allowed God to use me more than he's ever used me before. It's going to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul said. He goes on to say in verse 13, so that my bonds in Christ, notice this, are manifest. You know what it means to manifest something? It means to be brought to life. It means to let people be known. Listen to me, church. Have you, have you ever thought about the witness that you are to people? When people see you, when people hear you, do they hear Jesus Christ? Do they see Jesus Christ? Do they see you're given in everything that you've got this side of heaven until Jesus one day calls us home? There's three quick points. The very first point is this, quarantine for Christ. I guess, boy, that'd even be a, a better title for a message. Quarantine for Christ. The very first thing that Paul was teaching us here in the book of Philippians, with him being in jail, he made this statement that Christ would be made known. Paul says that it has furthered the gospel. He could have sat there like a lot of people, like bumps on logs. He could have sit there and become depressed. He could have become discouraged. He could have thought, hey, you know what? This is biblical prophecy that's coming, and it's coming to pass. I'm just going to sit here on my seat and do nothing. But listen to me. That's not what Jesus Christ wants us to do. Can I tell you something? God has given you a voice. God has given you a hand. God has given you a body. Listen to me, friend. We ought to lift up the name of Jesus Christ this morning. Why? Because our job is to make sure that we make Christ known. Well, how did Paul do that? Paul did it while being quarantined. He did it while being imprisoned. You know what he did? He wrote a letter. Matter of fact, he wrote four letters to every church, every place. Why? Because he loved him. Because he wanted to see the gospel of Jesus Christ get further out into the world. Can I tell you something? This is not a time for the church to sit down and be quiet. It's a time for God's people to stand up, cheer louder than we ever had before. You want to know why? Because the Lord's coming back, bless God. And we need to be ready. We need to further the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Paul didn't get discouraged. Oh, I'm sure he had times where he probably questioned just like us when the devil comes. But then he come to his senses and says, you know what? I'm not going to give the devil credit. I'm going to honor God. God, 
Can you use me in this situation? And God, how can you use me in this situation? You know what? Paul was writing letters to the church. You know what he was doing? He was giving them hope. He was giving them joy. You want to know why we stand up here? You want to know why we come an hour and a half early on Sunday mornings? We do it for you. We do it for the Lord. We do it for those that's lost, hoping that someone would come to know Jesus Christ. We come to encourage you. What if we just sat down and we didn't have Facebook Live? What if we didn't have services at our home? What if we just waited for this to get over? Listen, we've got to further the Jesus Christ ministry gospel. Paul realized that we must make Christ known. Let me ask you, where's your hope? A lot of people's putting their hopes in the government and health officials. People's putting their hope in their jobs. Putting their hopes in the stimulus checks. You can agree or disagree. I think it's one of the worst things they've ever done. Man says, God, Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. Where's all the horn honking now? Well, preacher, I like my, I know you do. Everyone likes something for free, but let me just tell you something. Nothing's for free. It costs somebody something. My concern is it's going to cost my children and their children over time, over time. Listen to me. We need to get back to work. We need to get back to church. But I'm telling you what, before we ever do that, we better make sure we fall on our face and do as 2 Chronicles chapter 7 teaches us. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven. And he said, I will heal their land. That's where we need to be. We ought to seek the face of God. Why? Because God brings joy. God brings hope. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. We can make Christ known while we're shut up in our homes. We can make Christ known while we're shut up in our cars. We can make Christ known wherever we go this side of heaven. Listen to me. You're not quarantined all the way. You get out and you go to the store. We can make Christ known. Some people still working. You ought to make Christ known. Because, see, that's what God's called you to do. Well, preacher, how can I, sitting at home and... How can I make Christ known? Well, let me ask you something. What have you done since being quarantined to further the gospel? What have you done to further the kingdom of God? Yeah, everybody has a cell phone. Have you used it for the glory of God? <laughs> have you texted somebody and said, listen, I love you, praying for you, hope everything's all right. Let me know, by the way, if I can do anything to help you. You can further the gospel that way. When was the last time you wrote a letter to someone that you really cared about and loved? You hadn't seen in a while. Listen, just like Paul. Paul loved the church at Philippi. So what did he do? He sat down in a prison jail while being quarantined because he loved the people. He wrote a heartfelt letter to them telling them how much that he loved them and how they need to hang in there. I see I'm not getting many horn honkings now. Probably not many amens at home. And our prayer is this, that God's dealing with our heart, how that we, though we're quarantined, can still further the gospel of Christ. Like we said earlier, when was the last time you got in your car and you just drove by someone's house, honked the horn, waved at them and said, hey, want to let you know I'm praying for you. Let me know if I can do anything. We've reached thousands of people upon thousands of people by Facebook. Those things are great. But you know, if we make Jesus Christ known, that a real revival can break out. Your family can get saved. You here today can be saved. The world can turn to Christ. One of the greatest revivals we've ever seen can break out if we do not sit in our homes while quarantined with doing nothing concerning Christ. You know what else happens? While we're quarantined, not only should we make Christ known, but notice with me at verse number 14. The Bible goes on down to say, And many of the brethren, 
Many of the brothers, now this is Paul writing, he's in prison, he's writing to the church at Philippi. What does he say in verse 14? And many of the brethren in the Lord. So that means this, those that he was writing to was Christians. But notice what happened while writing to them and encouraging them. In verse 14, and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds. In other words, because I am in shackles, because I'm in chains, because I'm under house arrest, because I am in prison, listen to me, He goes on to say they're waxing confident. People were getting more confident in their walk with Christ. Listen, they were getting closer to Christ all because of the Apostle Paul being arrested and put in prison. You just need to get that. They're waxing confident by my mods and much more bold to speak. Much more bold to speak. Much more bold to speak the word without fear. You don't want to know what else happens while we're quarantined. Not only should Christ be made known by God's people, but I also believe this, that Christians ought to speak the word now more than they ever have in the past. Do you know what Paul is saying here? He's saying this, that God's people, his church, the ones that he was writing to, they were getting closer to God. They were getting bolder for Jesus. They were memorizing scripture. They were going out and telling people, listen, if you want to make heaven your home, you need to be born again. Can I ask you something church has this happened to you while being quarantined you don't want to know what I've heard from people Christians <clears throat> since they've been quarantined now this is my personal experience I don't know about you folks I I've seen it on Facebook I've seen it by text I've seen it by phone calls I've talked to pastors talked to other Christians I'm not picking anybody out I would never hinder or try to discourage anybody, but this is what I've heard. And all these things are good. I've heard this. We're just trying to find a way to pass the time. Did you hear that? Just trying to find a way to pass the time. Well, if you're a Christian, you know what you ought to be doing? Furthering the gospel. Well, preacher, I can't. I'm quarantined. You know what else I've heard? I've eaten more food than I ever have in the past. Honk your horn. (laughs) Amen? Amen? Eating more, eating more food than I've ever eaten and I can't since, since Christmas, since the holidays. You know what else I've heard? I've said, I, I've heard this. I've spent more time with my family than I ever have in the past. That's a great thing. Why didn't you do it before? God didn't give you a family not to spend time with. Does it take a, a, a pandemic in your life to realize how important your family is? Now listen, you all I'm preaching this morning, you all can out and say amen or honk or whatever, but I'm telling you what, what I'm telling you is the gospel truth. You know what else I've heard? I've been doing a lot of remodeling, and I'll raise my hand, that's what I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of painting. I've been doing a lot of tearing out. I've been doing a lot of electricity. Preacher, are you pretty good with electricity? Nope, I'm just good enough to get myself in trouble. Amen. You know when the sparks fly, you've done something wrong. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what else I've heard? I've heard people say this. and they, uh, We was out, and, and I heard this person, how you doing? I'm doing okay. And uh, Have you been? Oh, I'm doing all right. I said, well, well what's going on? I'm just doing my part. What do, you, what do you mean you're doing your part? I'm just trying to stay home not to get this virus. Those things are good. But what have you done to further the kingdom of Christ? You know, I, I think we should listen. I think we should obey. But that doesn't mean we stop ministering. Amen, preacher. What have you done to minister for the Lord? You know what I've heard less of? I've heard less from people saying this, that I'm reading my Bible more than I ever have. I have not heard people say I'm praying harder than I've ever prayed before. I have not heard people say I'm spending more time with God more than I ever have before. You know what I've not heard? Pastor, I'm praying for you more than I ever have before. You know what I've not heard? I'm praying for the church more than I ever have before. And you know what I've not heard? I've not heard this. I'm praying for my lost family more now than I ever have before. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Christians need to speak the word of God. You want to know what happens when we're in his word? We get closer to God. You want to know why no one has the answers, why everyone's confused and we're not sure what to do? Because people stop praying. We're satisfied. We need to be on our knees, on our face, crying out to God. 
Oh, God, we need you. Oh, God, we need the answers. Oh, God, we need direction. Oh, God, help me to get closer to you. God, help me to pray more fervently before than I ever had. The Bible says the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I bet you didn't come to church expecting a message on quarantine, did you? Christians, you ought to speak the word more than you ever have. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, But seek ye first, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we read in the word of God, Paul is in prison. Let me remind you, Paul did not stop. I'm just going to be frank with you. There's a lot of Christians holed up in their houses that have stopped waiting for the storm to pass by. Can I remind you, the disciples, when they were in the midst of the storm, they never stopped. They kept toiling. They kept going. Yes, they were fighting a battle that they could not win. But can I say this? Because of their consistency, because of their faithfulness, they continue to fight against the storm. But can I tell you, in the midst of the storm, glory to God, can I tell you who, who showed up about the third midnight hour? His name was Jesus Christ. He came walking on the water. Hey, listen, and I understand. They didn't know it was him. They thought he was a ghost. But can I tell you this? Jesus just stepped down and he said this. Listen, peace be still. I'm telling you if we trust, if we pray and we continue to seek the face of God this thing can go away Christ needs to be made known more than ever before we ought to speak the word of God more than we ever have before and in closing look with me over at verse 20 Paul said this according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. Paul had come to a point in his life that regardless of what he was faced with, regardless of what happened to him, regardless of what they would do to him, whether it be 39 lashes save one, whether it was this, he was bitten, shipwrecked, it did not matter. Paul had made a purpose. He had made a, a promise to God that, listen to me, he was going all the way for Jesus Christ. And he said, according to my expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be be uh, magnified in my body whether it be by life or by death you know what he was saying there listen to me church now more than ever the church ought to be standing up standing proud and they ought to be making Jesus Christ the, the Lord of their life they need to be lifting up the name of Jesus Christ why because this world's dying lost and going to hell your family while quarantine is dying lost and going to hell and you're doing nothing about it when we ought to be sharing the gospel telling people how much that Jesus loves him and the only way we're going to get through this is through and by his help so that's why we're quarantined we're quarantined because God wants us I believe with all my heart to make Christ known more than ever before also we ought to speak the word of God more now than we ever have before hey perilous times are here in case you didn't know it now what are you going to do about it and thirdly, Christ needs to be lifted up. Quit giving the devil what he doesn't deserve. I said quit giving the devil what he doesn't deserve. You forgot who's got all power. I believe his name is Jesus. I believe his father's name is God Almighty. Maybe, just maybe, God's wanting us to trust him a little bit more. Paul realized Christ was all he had while quarantined. Hey, have you come to the place in your life where you've realized Jesus Christ is all I've got? He's all I've got. If he lived or died, Christ would be magnified. What was he saying? Can I ask you this question? If God should take your last breath today, what will people remember you by? Will they remember you by a faithful servant doing everything they can to reach people, the lost, 
for the kingdom of Christ? Or we just remember uh, just another person in this life. Listen, I don't want to be just another person. I don't want to be uh, some person exalted either. But I do know this. When I close my eyes in death, I want people to know that I've lived the way that I preach. And listen to me, friend. I don't know about you. And it may not mean much to you. But when I close my eyes in death, I want people to look at my life and say, Bless God, he was a God-fearing man. And every word that he preached, he lived by it. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. More than anything today, Christ needs to be lifted up. You want to know why? Because, see, Christ brings hope. Christ brings peace. And Christ brings joy. Hey, I, I got joy in this thing. I don't know about you. I don't know about you folks watching by Internet in the comfort of your home. I don't know if you're living every day in fear, fear afraid to go out. I have no idea. Paul says, if I live... I'm going to live for Christ. If I die, I'm just going to gain Christ. Regardless of what he did in this life, whether he was going to be quarantined, imprisoned or not, he was just going to live for Christ. He had purposed that in his heart. How can we ever expect to lead souls to Christ if we're not going to believe in the one that we're confessing? <laughs> he brings hope. He brings peace. He brings joy. But when he's lifted up, listen to me. When Jesus Christ is lifted up, this is the word of God. He will draw all people to him. Jesus Christ made this statement in closing John chapter 12, verse number 12. He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Listen to me, church. You can get out of your car. You can get off your chair. Get off your sofa today and stand and raise your hands to heaven and say, God, I want to lift up Jesus Christ this morning because, bless God, I'm saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. It wasn't the government that did it. It wasn't the pastor that did it. It wasn't the church that did it. It wasn't my job that did it. But, God, it was Jesus. Why? Because he was lifted up. Hallelujah. He was lifted up. Today, you watching by internet, you listen to me. You can be saved today because Jesus Christ has been lifted up. If you're here in this parking lot today, listen to me. You can be saved today. Why? Because we've done nothing but lift up Jesus Christ. This is not about the Centerburg Free Will Baptist Church. This is not about Pastor Mark Tuggle. This is not about any of the singers. This is not about Brother Sam. This is not about Brother Bobby. This is not about Brother Micah. This is not about Brother Jay. This is not about Brother Jeff. But I cannot tell you what. It's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the author and finisher of my faith. Hallelujah! This morning, it's about Jesus. So I guess my point to the message is this. Whether you're quarantined or not, lift up the name of Christ. Make Christ be known in your home. Speak the word of Christ to those that need to hear it. Lost or saved. I'm telling you, nothing does a person greater joy than to get that phone call. <laughs> Just want to let you know I'm praying for you. That text had you on my heart. Just thought I'd reach out to you. Everything okay? Do you need anything? Nothing feels greater when you go to the mail and you find letters and cards from people that you never in a million years would have thought you would ever got them from. But I thank God for them because, listen to me, they came at the right appointed time. And listen to me, church, it's about high time that God's people stop listening to man and start listening to Jesus Christ because there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And can I say this? There's only one way, and his name is Jesus. Right now, I want those girls to come. I don't know where they're at. They're going to sing a song. For those of you that's here, get out of your car. We put an altar out here in the parking lot. We've distanced from everybody else. Christian person, if you've got to get out of your car and you've got to pray, we encourage you to do that. You stay on those stripes that separate these cars, you'll be safe. I don't know what song these girls are going to sing, but they're going to sing right now. You watching by internet, you can pray right there at your house. 
You can get down on your face right there. You can get on. Listen, I got saved at a coffee table in Westerville, Ohio at about 8 p.m. on a Tuesday. It wasn't even a Sunday. I wasn't at church. But the Holy Spirit of God got a hold of me. And you know what? When God gets a hold of you, you can't help but come to him. And I'm telling you, I believe God. I don't know who it is. I don't know where you're at. You may be in South Carolina. You may be in Colorado. You may be in Venezuela. I don't know where you're at. But if Jesus Christ is knocking upon your heart's door and he's bidding you to come, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice, he said, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. All I'm telling you is he wants a relationship with you today. And it would do my heart no greater joy than for you to get out of your vehicle, get up off your couch or out of your recliner and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And as they sing, we believe in keeping people's Personal lives, personal. This between you and God. Wounded and forsaken. That altar's behind the camera. Behind the You'll find your way out of your car. You find your way to an altar. I'll come to you. I'll keep a safe distance. And I'll tell you what thus saith the word of God. Christian, if you're in a place in your life where you need prayed for, get out of your car right now. Seek the face of God. You can be carried to the table this morning. I was carried to the table. Listen to me. Let God speak to your heart. Seated where I don't Come on. Belong. Right now. Come on. Don't be ashamed. Carry to the table. Don't be ashamed. Come out right now. Swept away by Paul wasn't ashamed. He did whatever he could to reach those that was lost. And I don't see my brokenness anymore. Somebody else want to come? And I'm seated at the table of the Lord. I'm carried to the table. Has Christ been made known in your life? The table of Are you speaking Christ every time you get that phone call? Or are you making that phone call? Giving people hope? Listen to me. Not griping about what the government's doing or the health officials, but saying this, listen to me. I don't understand it, but I know God's got it under control. The encouraging words Fighting that should come from Christians. Here, why he Have you been lifting up Christ this morning? Am I good enough to share this cup? How many of you Christians can get out of your car right now? And come and pray for a lost loved one. I know it may sound the crazy. My name. Well, I'll tell you what's crazy. We're out here in the middle of a parking lot. It's cold, but it's the right temperature for me. Amen. Praise God. How many of you can get out of your car right now? Find your message. Just stand by your car and lift up your hands to heaven and pray to God and say, God, heal our land. Save our people. God, help us. Can someone do that this morning? Thank you for being honest. Thank you for minding the Lord. Can any of you do that this morning? Pray for those that's lost and undone. Maybe you've got drug addicted family. Listen, they've they, they've they've ruined their lives. They, the, the drugs have conceived them. Maybe you've got uh, children or loved ones that have walked away from God. Listen, maybe God's just waiting for you to get out and move and lift up His name. I'm telling you, God wants to. Oh, thanks be to God. It's so good to see people praying this morning. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, we need to pray more than we ever have. Oh, lift your hands to heaven this morning. Glory to God. Isn't it good to feel God's presence? Oh, I wish you could see what's happening here at Centerburg this morning. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, God bless your people. When I'm seated at the table of the Lord, if you're lost, you need to come right now. God's dealing with your heart, and He's pulling. He's encouraging you to come. The table of and I'll pray with you right here. Sing another verse, sissy. We're going to come to a close. I'm going to step right out here. Brother Sam, you just keep the camera on the girls or whatever. Fighting come tell, of listen fear. to me. Wondering why he called Come let Jesus name. Christ help you. Am I good enough to I share don't care who you are. Cup? This world Christians, has there's no shame in failing God. Even in my there's no shame in making mistakes. What's a shame is when we don't learn from our mistakes. In his holy presence, you can never learn except you mess up. We've got to learn to trust in Jesus. If you're here today, you need to pray. To All you got to do is step out of your seat or out of your car. Let's pray.
Seated where I don't Would there be anyone? Hear anyone more. at all? Come right up here. I'll keep my distance and pray for you. Carry to the table. Swept away by his love. And I don't see my brokenness anymore. Thank God. When I'm seated at the table of the Lord, <laughs> I'm carried to the table. Thank God. I think I've been carried to the table this morning. The table of the <laughs> Lord. Boy, it feels good. Praise your Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all those praying. And I don't see my brokenness anymore When I'm seated at the table of the Lord I'm carried to the table The table of the Lord. The table of the Lord. We want to thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you, the Lord, for all those that was praying. My goodness, if you could only see what we've seen here this morning and watch God move. We're going to do this as long as the weather permits until we get back in the church. Uh, we're just going to continue to find a way to get the gospel out to people. Listen, even though we're quarantined, right? That's the message today, whatever it takes. Let's get the message out to those. Let's be dismissed with a word of prayer. With being that said, we will reconvene here tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll be preaching from inside the church tonight with just a select few. So we'll go Facebook Live again tonight at 6 o'clock. But with that being said, let's bow our heads and let's pray and we'll be dismissed with a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your word. Lord, it is so rich and powerful. And God, there's nothing in life that we are faced with, God, that you don't set the example in your word. And Lord, what greater example that we have faced than the Apostle Paul when he couldn't get out of quarantine. God, he was in a prison cell. But God, he found a way to reach others with the gospel of Christ. God, my prayer is this, is that you would help us as your people, Lord, to find that way, regardless of what it is. God, help us to encourage one another to get the gospel out. Lord, help us to, be, uh, to uh, let Christ be made known. Lord, help us not only that, but let us as Christians speak the word of God. And God, wherever we go and whatever we do, may we lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that you dismiss us from this place. But Lord, never from your presence. And Lord, if there's someone watching by internet, God, may they private message me. Lord, let us know that they've made a decision for Jesus Christ. God, we'll honor you. We'll give you glory and praise. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.